and block holep with early apical release using virtual basket pulse modulation from Quanta system. This pulse modulation provides better cutting and hemostasis. The end result after the three classic three-lobe holep technique provided a high rate of postoperative temporary stress incontinence. With the in-block approach, we managed to preserve the sphincter's mucosa, and this is associated with a very low rate of postoperative stress incontinence. This case is showing uh, this technique in a man with a 90cc prostate. The initial step is to mark the white line, which is a way to set the landmark of the sphincter and the fact that we cut the mucosa at the beginning of the procedure ensures that it's not going to break as it did with the three uh, lobe classic technique so that the mucosa of the sphincter is going to remain attached to the sphincter providing an excellent sealing effect and uh, excellent continence uh, immediately after the operation. This step is performed with the fiber at 6 o'clock that allows reaching into the anterior aspect. Then we enter the plane in the left side. This can be done with energy or sometimes a little push can help uh, determining that the plane is correct. And then of course uh, the entry in the contralateral side follows to find the posterior plane. In order to be able to develop the posterior plane, the frenulum of the veru has to be incised as well to connect both planes and then that will generate a line of dissection that is a fantastic landmark to follow to develop the posterior plane. In this uh, part of the operation, the aiming of the laser is against the line and that will uh, allow to develop the plane very safely. Once the posterior plane is developed, the fiber is rotated and taken towards 12 o'clock to start the early apical release. Initially, an incision is made to deepen the white line and that will give us access to try to find the anatomical plane of the lateral aspect of the prostate. This plane has to be taken towards the bladder neck to mobilize the apex and it has to be uh, ensured that this line will connect with the previous posterior line. Then again, before progressing anteriorly, it's important to cut the apical uh, attachments first so initially, an incision is made to deepen the uh, line and then the proper plane is sought to develop the plane towards the anterior part. This cutting into the adenoma, this deepening of the white line, doesn't leave adenoma behind. It just gives access to find the right plane easily. In this case, the white line was not completely finished at 12 o'clock, so I thought it was a good moment to finish it by incising a little bit of the mucosa that was not accessible at the beginning. Then the same steps are taken on the other side. Initially, an incision is made to the white line to deepen it, and then this phase consists in mobilizing the lateral aspect of the apex and connecting to the posterior line. So there is a definite line that goes around the adenoma that will guide us during the dissection. Then again, we go back to the apex to cut initially, cut uh, into the, the white line to deepen the white line, and then we seek for the good plane to continue the ascending dissection towards 12 o'clock. The idea is to leave only the 12 o'clock fibers to be cut at the end, having a reference in both sides. The fact that uh, the anterior apex has already been dissected a little bit from the capsule makes it descend. Also, when cutting the 12 o'clock fibers, we initiate the incision horizontally uh, at the beginning, and then, of course, once the sphincter is left behind, 
we have to go up all the way to find the proper plane so that we don't leave any tissue anteriorly at 12 o'clock. It is not necessary to leave tissue at 12 o'clock because patients are perfectly continent when everything is removed as long as the mucosa of the sphincter is preserved. So no need to leave tissue anteriorly. But of course, we have to be careful with this dissection. This would be the end of the early apical release. You can see it's not an immediate apical release. It's an early apical release. And it needs these steps of careful mobilization of the apex until the sphincter can be released. After that, we have a very nice uh, surgical space that is uh, irrigated uh, perfectly by the the scope visibility is great and then we have a circumferential line of dissection going around the adenoma so it's easy to follow this line and you only have to care uh, to check the quality of the tissues um, when the 12 o'clock uh, vertical fibers are found this is a patognomonic sign that uh, this is the entry point to the bladder and then the bladder neck is dissected following the direction of the fibers and uh, the lines are always uh, deepened and developed this is the checking of the position of the retral orifice which is far away in this case and it's very important when we start dissecting these uh, difficult angles for example below the adenoma to fire closer to the adenoma than to the capsule. This will protect the capsule. The energy will be absorbed by the adenoma, but uh, it will allow you to cut the fibers that join together adenoma and capsule. Then the adenoma is lift on the left side and pushed into the bladder. That gives better access towards the six o'clock uh, region. And then the pushing continues following the same rotational movement so the adenoma goes into the bladder but rotated not uh, front uh, wise and then the six o'clock fibers are cut to complete uh, enucleation it is a fast procedure easy to see during the procedure great hemostasis also thanks to the virtual basket uh, development and of course, the perfect preservation of the sphincter's mucosa will allow for a perfect continence after the procedure in the majority of patients.